In the last episode, I showed you how to automate an endless supply of blaze cakes, and in today's episode, you'll be learning how to make a fully self-sufficient train track factory so you'll always have tracks for your trains. So welcome back my friends to Hobble Create. My name is Hobble, and if you're new here, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and remember to leave a like. So in today's episode, we're actually going to have a little bit of fun. Instead of sending over the cobblestone from episode 1 and the iron nuggets from episode 3, we're actually going to combine these two builds into one in order to make a fully self-sufficient train track factory. Because quite honestly, sending over the resources we generated previously and into a little bit of a deployer system would be kind of easy and boring. So let's make things interesting. So we're going to start off with a conveyor belt that is five blocks long. On the third block from the right, we're going to add in a mechanical press. Then we need to put in a deployer and a second deployer. Then to the left of the belt, we need to add in a mechanical saw and two gearboxes. Now temporarily, we're going to add some power into our belt. That way, when we're building, we can actually make sure all of the rotations are going in the correct direction. But to make this factory self-sufficient, we're going to be swapping this out later for a windmill. Now starting behind our mechanical saw, we need to add in our stone system. So we're going to add in a belt, we're going to turn it around so it faces into our saw, and we need to make this belt six blocks long. On the first block, we're going to add in a brass tunnel, and we're going to be filtering this for stone. Then on the third block of the belt, we're going to add in a shaft, then a shaft coming out of there, and we're going to make this a tiny little baby belt. Then behind our belt that's got our deployers on, we're going to add in another two block belt. And because of the way that tunnels work, we're actually going to add a filter to this belt here that's going to be anything that isn't stone. Then where these two belts start, we're going to add in one more set of brass tunnels. Now we're going to make ourselves a quick and cheeky cobblestone generator. So on our belt with our two brass tunnels, we're going to leave a one block gap and we're going to add in two chutes. On those chutes, we're going to add in two placeholder cobblestone. On top of those cobblestone, we need to add in two mechanical drills. Now on the left hand side of our build, we're going to add in two blocks down the bottom here. We need to make a bit of a chamber for our water. However, it's going to be quite close to our lava, so it might be worth doing non-flammable blocks. So we've got our two blocks down here. We need to add four blocks to one side, four blocks to the other side, four blocks to the back, twice. Then on the other side, on our chutes, we're going to add in our two blocks, then three blocks on one side, three blocks on the other, and three blocks twice on the back. And on these top blocks on the left, we need to add in two lava sources. And on the right, we need to add in two water sources. And that's cobblestone sorted. So on the front now, where we've got our two gearboxes, we're going to add in another gearbox here, then a shaft, and then finally, one more gearbox. That's going to supply rotation to the belts we've got at the back. Now, don't power your mechanical drills just yet, because otherwise, you're going to have cobblestone spewing everywhere. But what we can do is to make this a little bit more lossless, we can just add in three blocks to the front here, and three blocks around the back. That's just gonna mean that our cobblestone has got more chance to reach our chutes. Now, before we forget, why don't we grab ourselves a stone slab, come down to our mechanical saw, and set the filter to only make stone slabs. So for the stone section now, there's only one more thing we need to add. We need to turn this cobblestone into regular stone, and we're gonna do this in this tiny little gap right here. So next to our gearbox, we need to add in two non-flammable blocks, and on this closest block, we're gonna add in an encased fan. Then we're going to pop down a shaft on the belt, we're going to add one to the gearbox and also on the left hand side. Some of these are going to get replaced a little bit later, but for now, this is going to keep our lava in place. Then to power this fan, we need to add a shaft into our gearbox here, add a gearbox onto the end, a vertical gearbox and another vertical gearbox. Then on the belt next to our shaft, we're going to add in a non-flammable block, that's just going to stop us from getting burnt by the flames. So now that we've got the stone slab side automated, we're going to work on our iron nuggets. So on this tiny little belt that we started earlier, we're going to add a shaft into the end, and we're going to make a belt that is five blocks long. And next to our double brass tunnels, we're going to add in a gearbox and a shaft into this belt. That's going to give us the rotation. Now we need to add in some crushing wheels. We're going to throw a shaft into the belt here, add two vertical gearboxes, and then on those gearboxes, we're going to pop down two crushing wheels. At the end of that belt, we're going to add in a temporary block. Then we need to build ourselves a nice big 3x3 item vault. Making sure not to forget to add in our funnel that goes into this item vault. And we can remove the temporary block. So now that we're generating gravel, we need to build a quick system that is going to wash that gravel into iron nuggets. So above our latest funnel, we're going to add in a shaft, a shaft that goes next to it. That way we can make ourselves a belt. All of our gravel is going to come out of this funnel. And then at the end of this tiny belt, we're going to add in two permanent blocks. The block on the left needs an encased fan, and later on we'll come back and add a water block here, which will act as our washer. 
And then once the gravel has been washed, we'll have iron nuggets and flints just waiting on this belt. So why don't we go ahead and set up a system now to pick those up. So above our crushing wheel, we're going to leave a one block gap. And then up here, we're going to add in an item vault. Now you need to be quick because we're going to remove this permanent block here. And we're going to add in another item vault. And then two on the top of that to make a nice two by two item vault. And the reason we've gone for 2x2 two two is on the back we can add in a brass funnel and we can say that all of our flint is going to get dumped into this lava. Then we're going to make ourselves a normal filter with some gravel in. We're going to set it to deny. Then on our item vault we're going to add in a brass funnel and we're going to throw that filter in to say pick up anything that isn't gravel. But don't worry my friends we're almost done. I know it's a lot but we're almost at the point now where we can generate train tracks from nothing. Which is fun. Now to give power to our mini belt, we're going to come to the belt below it, add in a vertical gearbox, a shaft, and another vertical gearbox, that's going to give us our rotation. Then we're going to do the same for our encased fan, we need to add in a vertical gearbox and a shaft. Then we're going to come around to the side because we need to add in a vertical gearbox that's going to allow us to connect to our mechanical press. Another vertical gearbox on the top, and finally, a regular gearbox. And then while we're here, add in a gearbox to power your press and your deployers. Now all that's left to do is actually get those iron nuggets into our deployers. So right below our item vault, we're going to add in a depot. Above that, we're going to add in a brass funnel. We're going to set the filter to iron nuggets. Then we need to take a mechanical arm. We're going to right click on our depot to say take from here. And we're going to double right click on both of our deployers. We're just going to pop it down on this block here that we put down to stop ourselves from getting burnt. Then to add some power behind our encased fan, we have got a gearbox. We're going to add a vertical gearbox into that. We're going to add a small cog wheel into our mechanical arm, and that is going to connect to that gearbox. Then on the other side of our encased fan, we're going to add in two shafts. We're going to remove the bottom one. This could be honestly be any block. This is just something to stop the water from spilling out, which we can actually go ahead and throw in now. But now that we should have all of our systems up and running, we can actually go ahead and give this a test run. So... We're going to add some encased chain drives to the top of our drills and we're going to make it four blocks longer but on the fourth block we're going to change the orientation. That's because on the other side then we can add a vertical gearbox in over here and then a regular shaft and we now have cobblestone being generated. That then goes down onto the belt. One cobblestone gets cooked, another one makes its way over to the crushing wheels, gets crushed down into gravel, that gravel then gets washed and that one turned into flint so that got automatically dumped into our lava. Now what we need to do is on the side of our mechanical arm we need to scroll this down to force round robin. The reason we do that is because we don't want the mechanical arm to favour one deployer more than the other. So there's no point in having 64 iron nuggets in one and zero in the other. Now as you can see we have generated some train tracks. It did just get dropped on the floor. So let's go ahead and add in a nice 2x2 two two item vault. We're going to go ahead and throw on a funnel. And we have fully automated train tracks. Now it's time to actually make this fully self-sufficient and we're going to add in a bit of a windmill. So moving around the back of the machine where we've got our cobblestone being generated, we're going to throw down a gearbox coming off of this belt. We're going to add two shafts and then on the end of there we're going to throw down another gearbox. On this gearbox we need to add in a clutch. This is where we're going to actually turn our machine on and off using a stockpile switch. That way we're not generating cobblestone when we don't actually need cobblestone because our storage is full. It's a good lag control measure. We may as well turn the machine off if we don't actually need it. On the side of our clutch we're going to pop down a rotational speed controller. We're going to connect in a large cog wheel. Coming off of that large cog wheel we need a gearbox and then finally a windmill bearing. And now we need to build ourselves quite a chunky windmill. So I've removed the original power source now and we're actually going to give our windmill bearing a right click then very quickly running around to make sure that this belt is spinning away from us. If your belt is spinning towards you, you're going to need to come into your rotational speed controller and wind this all the way down to a negative number. Now with 35 sails, it looks like 32 RPM is actually going to be our maximum speed, which honestly isn't a terrible speed, but if you did want yours to go quicker, go ahead and just chuck on a bunch more sails. But there we go my friends, you now know how to fully automate self-sufficient train tracks. Which is awesome because it's always going to be nice to have a big stockpile of train tracks ready for when your project needs it. So if you did enjoy yourself and you learned something new then be sure to hit that subscribe button as you are not going to want to miss the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye guys.